Student SiteMaker Introduction, version 2. This is the video that you watch if this is the first time that you've been here and you're just chomping at the bit to jump in and start doing stuff as opposed to spending lots of time reading documentation or trying to figure out how things really work. Some people really are more comfortable just playing with things and figuring out what they do. And that's really why children have such an advantage over adults is they aren't worried about breaking things. They're worried about they're, they're not worried at all. They're just more concerned about figuring out how things do things. So when you go to insightmaker.com, this is for the first time, this is the, the screen that you will run into. And we're doing pretty good. We have almost 21,000 users now. Um, there are some things here. This um, There's a more in-depth video about an overview of all of the functions of InsightMaker that, that will, then there'll be a version four here shortly. And on this page, the, the main thing that you need to be interested in is to get a free account. So you click this, go in here and fill in a username, your email address, create a password, and, and fill in the rest of this, and tell it to create you a new account. It will, InsightMaker will then send you a confirmation email, and if you don't get it shortly, look in your spam folder. And if you don't get it at all, just come back and try and log in. Sometimes it gets lost, usually it doesn't. Um, though, once you finally have a username and password, then when you end up on the initial screen, you can go ahead and log in and give it your username and password and tell it to remember you, and you log in. You will then end up in this environment, and if once you have, well, this is, this is, this is the home page. this will list. Once you have created a number of models or insights, it will list your insights here. So this is the equivalent to what happens when you go click the, the My Insights um, link. It will show them to you most recently changed to the ones furthest away. You and you, if you click on My Insights, you can actually search your insights. So you get to a point where you have enough of them that it's hard to find them. You can look at the, the different features. There's some there's some documentation built into InsightMaker itself. There is also on the on the main page. There's a link here in a in a link down at the bottom to the InsightMaker online network users guide, which looks like this. And there's a video. Uh, about navigating this environment, which is is currently under development, but it's a, it's much more extensive than the online documentation. Once you are in, and you can look for insights. There's a there's a tag cloud of the tags more, most frequently used in models, and you can look at the new insights created by different people. The most recently created ones will be at the beginning. Um, this is a link to the most recent newsletters that we have put out about InsightMaker. You can peruse those. And But, I mean, the thing that you really want to do here is you want to create a new insight. This takes you to the entry screen. And rather than simply give you a blank screen, we give you a, an execute or a a complete model that will actually run. And it's a simple model about rabbits and, and a birth rate and births which contribute to that. So that if you come into here and you click Run Simulation, this will actually run and show you the development of the population of rabbits over time. So it, it just to give you a sense of something, because oftentimes a, a blank screen is the worst thing in the world to deal with. But if you want to get started, just, just click and clear this. There are a set of components that you build models with, such as a stock. You can drop it on there. You can then go ahead and type in the actual name for it, or you can change values over here in the right hand in the parameter panel, the names and notes. Once you create components, which you can also do by right clicking on the screen and create a variable new new var you can then use so that there's there's a the primary two are stocks and variables if you're developing simulation models otherwise if you're using if you're just drawing 
pictorial diagrams such as causal loop diagrams or rich pictures, you can, can use folders and text and pictures and buttons we'll talk about in, in another video someplace. But once you create the components, you then need a way to, to link them together, which for variables you connect them together with the link. So you select link when you mouse over something. It, it draws a connection from one point to another. If you are going to connect um, stocks together, stocks can only be connected together with flows because it represents the flow of, of information from one point to another. And if you want a flow into a stock, you draw it and then click reverse. There are a number of actions which are typical Windows actions um, styles so that you can modify the text and, and the, the style of the way that the, the entity is presented. There are a set of, of built-in images that you can use to replace the, the images for the elements that you create. And then when it comes to simulations, there are, there's a, you have to set up time settings to define how long the model is supposed to run and what the step sizes are. And some other advanced functions as a, such as, as embedding a model in the web. Once you've developed the model, you can embed it in a web page or, or um, a blog or some other place for, to give people access to it. There's a, a way to develop storytelling so that you can actually unfold a model. Um, some advanced features, but mostly, Either you're going to create a picture just by connecting things together, or you're going to create a simulation model, which has a much more rigorous definition. And once you have created it, or started to create it, you want to go ahead and tell it to save it. Notice that this is dark at the moment. Once you save it, it will turn a lighter color, but you tell it that you want to save it. You give it a title, a set of tags, and a description of the model itself. And once you do the initial save, it will automatically save it every time you make a change to it. And if you're developing a simulation, then you can run it. If you want to develop a simulation, my recommendation to you is watch this video. This will give you all of the um, initial ins and outs that you need to actually develop the three simplest types of simulation models. One, uh, reinforcing feedback, balancing feedback, and uh, feedback independent growth or decline. Uh, and it's only about 15 minutes long. So uh, it just, it's more than I want to put in, in this particular video. But, but this, is a, this, is, this is the environment. You don't have to go to a bunch of other screens. Everything is done on this screen. Uh, and if you... You can't see it at the moment because it's up above here, but once you create and save a model, let me, um, the model has a URL associated with it, and you can then go ahead and, and send that URL to somebody else, and they can go and look at your model. They can't change your model, but they can look at it. If it's a simulation, they can run it. And any model that you can f find, see in Insight Maker, if I go, let me click and go back to this point. Here is here is a model about moose and wolves. This is one of my models, but if you went and, and found this model, which is unfolded with in a in a storytelling mode, if you went and found this model, and you actually wanted to make changes to the model. You could clone it and create a copy of it that belonged to you, and then you could do anything you wanted to with it because it, it's essentially a version of it that belongs to you. So the the idea is simply to give you a sense that that you don't need to be overwhelmed by the environment because there are, in fact, only a few components that you use to create models with. And, and from that, you can create extremely sophisticated relationships and allow the simulation to give you a sense of the implications of those relationships. And and within the Insight Maker user's guide, all of the all of the functions of Insight Maker are just are presented in 
extensive detail so that there are um, there's a video and a description of each one of the components if you want to know about converters if you want to know about about separating connections or if you want to know about the difference between using links and flows all of those things are in the user's guide and the first time that you go there watch this video about navigating the user's guide and you should be in good shape so hope this has been a sufficient introduction to get you started and if you have any questions uh, send us a comment and or send us a question on the entry page for insight maker there's a button at the bottom called feedback if you simply go to, to this page and click the feedback button you can enter a question comment suggestions for improvements and we'll get the message and reply to you take care